Top 10 Movies on Netflix 10th one of Netflix's best original movies, Marriage Story Broke Our Heart. Don't be fooled by its title, as this is not a romantic or happy story. It's actually an emotionally raw portrait of a painful divorce, where tensions escalate due to cutthroat lawyers and miscommunications. Scarlett Johansson and Adam Driver are astounding in the lead roles, but it was Laura Dern who snatched the Oscar for Best Supporting Actress. 9. Spencer. There has been many fictional portrayals of Lady D's story, including Netflix's The Crown, and yet Spencer felt wholly unique. That's because of Kristen Stewart's beautiful performance, and director Pablo Lorraine's talent to turn real stories into meaningful nightmares. The movie takes place over four days around Christmas in Sandringham Estate, where Diana is dealing with her demons while witnessing the downfall of her marriage to Prince Charles. Rather than portraying a real story, Spencer dives into the people's princess's troubled mind. 8. The Irishman. It's a long watch, but it's worth your time. Martin Scorsese's The Irishman is one of Netflix's best original movies ever. Now that Scorsese is getting rave reviews with Apple TV+, S. Killers of the Flower Moon, it's the perfect time to remember the wonders of his previous movie, starring Robert De Niro, Al Pacino and Joe Pesci. Based on Charles Brandt's book I Heard You Paint Houses, the film follows a truck driver who gets sucked into the world of organized crime, becoming a hitman for a powerful crime family in 50s Pennsylvania. 7. Parasite. Oscar winner Parasite is an unmissable movie for those craving a thought-provoking, incredibly unexpected watch on Netflix. It's the kind of film you'll spend hours trying to decipher. Directed by Bong Joon-ho, the movie follows two families of different social statuses whose lives intertwine in surprising ways. After what unfolds, the wealthy Park family and the poor Kim family will never be the same. So, who is the parasite? We get some answers at the end of Parasite, which is absolutely bonkers. 6. Spider-Man. No Way Home. New MCU release The Marvels delivers a game-changing twist in its credit scene, and if that's got you in the mood for more multiversal shenanigans, check out Spider-Man, No Way Home. The 2021 blockbuster brought together three generations of Spider-Men in one of the best comic book movie moments ever, while also being an excellent Spider-Man movie in its own right that gave Tom Holland his most emotional storyline yet. 5th. The unbearable weight of massive talent. Nicolas Cage is back on the big screen with the hilarious satire dream scenario, but if you don't fancy a trip to the cinema, you'll find the unbearable weight of massive talent an equally brilliant watch. The movie sees Cage play a fictionalized version of himself who, low on funds, reluctantly agrees to meet billionaire superfan Javi Pedro Pascal on endearing form only for their meeting to turn into the kinds of action movies Cage is known for. Fourth, this movie is far better than Disney's live-action remake of Pinocchio, also released in 2022, and it shows a different side to the popular story written by Carlo Collati in 1883. Mexican director Guillermo del Toro, along with award-winning stop-motion animator Mark Gustafson, reimagines the story by setting it in 1930s Italy, against the backdrop of Mussolini's fascism. There, we follow woodcarver Geppetto, voiced by David Bradley, as he creates a wooden boy, Gregory Mann, who then learns what it means to be alive with the guidance of a talking cricket, Ewan McGregor. Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. Third, Gone Girl. Among David Fincher's best movies, Gone Girl is possibly the most divisive and provocative. Now that his new movie The Killer is available on Netflix, it's a good moment to go back to this disturbing story starring Rosamund Pike and Ben Affleck, and based on Gillian Flynn's book. The film follows the marriage between a frustrated writer and his popular wife Amy, which despite what everybody thinks, is far from perfect. When Amy goes missing, Nick becomes the main suspect. Second, The Wolf of Wall Street. Martin Scorsese is back on the big screen with Killers of the Flower Moon, but if you don't fancy a trip to the cinema, you can also check one of his best movies with Leonardo DiCaprio. The Wolf of Wall Street is an outrageous and hilarious biopic that tells the story of Jordan Belfort DiCaprio as he rose to the top of Wall Street, before a spectacular collapse which Scorsese conveys in supremely entertaining fashion. It's another lengthy Scorsese movie clocking in at 3 hours, but it rattles by in such fashion that you'll never feel the runtime. First this year marked the 25th anniversary of The Truman Show which might make you feel old, but is also a reminder of just how timeless Peter Weir's satire of reality TV is.
In one of his best ever roles, Jim Carrey is ordinary guy Truman Burbank who is unwittingly the star of the world's biggest reality show that's entirely about his life. Over the years, its takedown of reality TV has only gotten more accurate, while it remains as funny and emotional watch as it did in 1998. First, The Truman Show. This year marked the 25th anniversary of The Truman Show which might make you feel old, but is also a reminder of just how timeless Peter Weir's satire of reality TV is. In one of his best-ever roles, Jim Carrey is ordinary guy Truman Burbank who is unwittingly the star of the world's biggest reality show that's entirely about his life. Over the years, its takedown of reality TV has only gotten more accurate, while it remains as funny and emotional watch as it did in 1998.